Wow. <laughs> I, uh, I don't know, I don't have an idea what a word she was saying, folks. <laughs> but it sounded great. I'm impressed. Very, very impressive. I saw a few of our friends up here in shock, sitting there. Is that what they're teaching them? Is that what they're learning? <laughs> Anyway, um, and Majing, I absolutely promise to at least think twice before I speak or act, okay? <laughs> it's very, very good advice, I must say. Um, what a pleasure uh, to be here. Uh, Vice Premier Liu, we are really honored to have you here. Uh, and it's a pleasure to see all of you here. Thank you so much for coming to join us for this consultation on people-to-people -people exchanges. This really is where the action is. And I am excited by the energy and I'm excited by the discussion. Uh, Madam Leo and I spent a little extra time talking and I hope you'll forgive us, but we really were uh, excited about the panoply of possibilities, the ways in which we can expand uh, these exchanges, which make all the difference in the world. I cannot tell you, I, as I am privileged to travel, as secretary and go to so many different countries. And I meet finance ministers, environment ministers, prime ministers, foreign ministers, who proudly say, I was educated at Princeton, or I was educated at University of California, or I was educated somewhere in the United States, or in Great Britain, in Europe, or somewhere. But the, the pride that all of them have for that experience, and the connection that they feel is absolutely invaluable in terms of breaking down barriers, building understanding, bringing countries together, avoiding conflicts, uniting our peoples, and doing all of the things that diplomacy is about. So I am really pleased to welcome Vice Premier Liu here uh, to continue this, and Vice Minister Howe, thank you very much for your leadership, and I'm delighted with our new and uh, energetic addition to our team here at the State Department with Assistant Secretary Evan Ryan and Assistant Secretary Danny Russell sitting here in the front seat. Uh, we have a great team, all of whom uh, care enormously about this particular program and more importantly about the region and about our ability to be able to uh, connect. I I've been to Asia many, many times throughout my life. Uh, and three times since I became Secretary of State. And every time that I visit the region, I really come home with a much deeper understanding of the people, the challenges that they face, uh, and especially the issues that matter to people individually. And as you saw in the video there, they really are the same. They're not that different. People aspiring to jobs, to education, to opportunity, to family, to absence of conflict and presence of security, stability, all of these things. Since Vice Premier Leo and Secretary Clinton launched this initiative in 2010, we have really worked hard, and we're going to continue to work hard, in order to give more people the opportunity to be able to build their own understanding through people-to-people -people exchanges. There just isn't anything more valuable. And we got excited over lunch talking about you know, the possibilities of kids from high schools in the middle part of America and farm country going and meeting farm folks in China, the middle part of the western part of China and so forth, and building these linkages. That's how we're going to solve problems, I guarantee you, uh, in the short run and the long run. And this annual forum has served as a powerful way to address challenges and to identify new ways for us to be able to enhance our engagement. For example, thanks to the Fulbright Foreign Language Teaching Assistant Program, which came out of last year's uh, CPE, students in the United States have been able to benefit from the skilled Chinese instructors like uh, uh, Chen Gu, uh, or, uh, well, Chen really normally teaches at Hainan University, uh, the normal university in China, but he's currently serving as FLTA in my hometown of Boston, teaching Mandarin to students of Boston University. And Chen's here today, and if you ask him, he'll tell you how gratifying it is to teach American students not only his language, but just about life in China and about 
what they're thinking and he and his contemporaries and what they want out of life. He'll also tell you how much he is learning himself by being there. Uh, they say it takes an outsider to fully understand and comprehend the culture of a nation. Well, Chen has a master's degree now, I want you to know, in American studies. But if, as a result of being in Boston over this last period of time, he can now provide an explanation for the mania that is part of Red Sox Nation, <laughs> then someone should give him a PhD immediately, folks, which uh, he will have earned. The fact is that thanks to the CPE, American and Chinese citizens are learning from one another every single day. And astronomy students are, are coming together to discover new challenges and developments in both Western and Chinese space exploration. Playwrights are connecting virtually in order to stage theater performances and live stream them to cities in China and the United States simultaneously. American organizations like the Thomas Jefferson Foundation are planning exhibits in China and world-class athletes are acting as sports envoys to promote athletic inclusion and adaptation for young people with disabilities. Just this morning I was on uh, the Hill testifying before the uh, Senate Foreign Relations Committee on the Disabilities Treaty which can help raise global standards of dealing with disabilities to the ADA standards that we have here in America. And it's a wonderful way to include people who might otherwise be uh, discriminated against or left on the sidelines of life. Our educational exchanges are truly more widespread than ever before. And if I'm able to encourage that, as I hope to, they will be even more widespread over the course of these next years. Thousands, hundreds of thousands of Chinese students and teachers like Chen are coming to American colleges and universities. And later today, Vice Premier Liu and I will speak about President Obama's 100,000 strong initiative and the foundation uh, of the same name, which is aimed at uh, sending 100,000 American students to study in China by the end of next year. President Obama uh, sent over a letter to express his support for the CPE, and in that letter he wrote, the Chinese and American peoples want a strong cooperative relationship, and it is in our interest to work together to meet the global challenges that we face. Both President Obama and President Xi share a deep commitment to expanding the people-to-people -people exchanges between our countries. And that is because these exchanges give folks a chance to be able to have a deeper understanding of each other's way of life, and eventually that understanding can grow into trust. And trust, as we all know, grows into partnership and into a whole lot of benefits in the long run. 42 years ago, nine ping pong players, four officials, and two family members became the first Americans to set foot in China since the Cultural Revolution of 1949. Time magazine called the visit the Ping heard around the world. But the truth is that Americans did a lot more than play ping pong when they were there. They spent time with Chinese students, with factory workers. They visited uh, treasured Chinese sites like the Great Wall and the Summer Palace and they went to see the Canton Ballet. Their visit literally opened a new chapter in the history of United States and China relations. And it wasn't only because they played ping pong, it was through their visit to China that it became clear that despite the many differences between our peoples, differences that often politics and, and ideologues and sometimes even demagogues get in the way of, that, that there are also always a huge number of similarities and ways that we can bind people together. Ultimately, these exchanges can do a lot more than just bridge gaps between two different people. They can bring together the two largest polluters on Earth to help combat the serious challenge of climate change. They can bring together the two largest economies on Earth 
to help drive the shared prosperity that we want for all people. They can bring together two of the most powerful nations on Earth to promote peace, security, and stability in every corner of the globe. As President Obama put it in his letter, the world is looking to the United States and China to work together to solve pressing challenges. And there is great potential for athlete, cultural, and scientific exchanges to help solve problems for the benefit of all. By improving and expanding the ties between the people of our two countries, the CPE is providing critical gateways to important solutions. Well, the President and I and our counterparts in China know that enabling people in countries to come together in pursuit of those goals will lead not only to greater understanding, but eventually to an even stronger partnership between our two countries. The many collaborative people-to-people -people initiatives that come out of the CPE are a critical part of that process. They're as good as anything else that we do in form of diplomacy. And I look forward to building on that progress, on all of the progress that we've made, on using your ideas, your energy, your enthusiasm, your creativity, and together, if we continue to do this, this relationship will become one of the great relationships of all time and a game changer for the planet. That's our hope. Now it's my pleasure to introduce a woman who, as I learned at lunch, probably holds more portfolios in China than any other single person in charge of health, education, media, uh, what did I, uh, sports. I mean, you run the list, culture. Uh, it's quite extraordinary. I'm really delighted to introduce her to you, the Vice Premier of China, Madam Liu.